Burnley are in trouble. This is a painful one for me to do. Yes, I know, we're only three games in. However, from what I've seen so far, and I try to be positive here, but I'm really f***ing struggling. Burnley are bottom. And not only are we bottom, but we've also conceded 11 goals in three games. Each game being at home. Oh, for God's sake, man. I am recording this about an hour after the Spurs game. 5-2. This is gonna be a waffling video, okay? Um, call it a rant, whatever else. If I'm gonna delve deep into what is the problems at that club and maybe how can he solve things and how have they got in a situation, then what best thing to do is to do it for my own club. If you guys enjoy, <laughs> which I'm sure you will, smash the like button and all that good stuff. Subscribe. We've hit 375,000 subscribers so if you guys want to go and hit that sub that would really cheer me up and Mozilla designs um burnley for 15 percent off all items for the next 48 hours crack on lads so as we speak burnley are entering the international break dead last with a minus eight goal difference scoring three goals and conceding 11. the main concern that i have from this season is the fact that it absolutely makes no sense on what we're doing most of the time and that everything that got us here in the first place has been thrown completely out of the window number one what is the main problem with burnley that is simply put the defense and also midfield there is a massive massive gap we are playing a high line so high that even man city would be impressed and we have not got the players capable of doing that in this division at this current moment we played a five back against man city then some sort of 4-2-4 formation against aston villa and then against spurs we played a sort of 4-4-2 formation in the championship burnley of course had a lot more time on the ball due to the disparity of quality in the divisions and therefore we had a lot more time therefore in the championship we can consistently go into a sort of 3-2-4-1 formation with one of the four backs going into midfield alongside Josh Cullen with the other four back and the back two going into the defense to spread the ball out. We played our wingers, usually Teller, Benson, Ozeruri, out wide, very wide on the pitch, high and wide to receive the ball. With the other midfielder, sometimes being a cork or Johan Bergumansson, acting as the eight, with the striker dropping deep and can link up play. That is how Burnley played in the championship. And before I get into it, stats wise, Burnley last year wasn't just a very high attacking and high score scoring team we also had the best defense in the championship it wasn't just scoring goals we also were solid defensively as well not at all times but for the most part we were pretty solid at the back so let's get into the tactics this year defensively we are all over the place and no one really knows what to do our left back in what was ian martin of course has gone back to chelsea and hasn't returned back despite our efforts therefore we have not got another left back to replace him despite the entire window to do so so right now we're playing every single player at left back other than the only left back in the club, if that makes any sense. So in left back, we've got Charlie Taylor, who is the only left back left in the club. And we are now playing Vitinho, who's not a left back, as a right back as left back. Del Croix from Andolet that we signed, who is a left side centre back that also tried a left back and failed. And now we played Connor Roberts, who's played the entire season last season as a right back and his entire career as a right back or right wing back. He then went on to play left back we are playing everyone at left back other than the only player that has played left back in the premier league for five six years and by the way if you're not a burnley fan then i'm on about charlie taylor that's just one problem that i find which means that when it comes to playing out from the back that is our main aim each time the ball goes to our left back who is right footed on the left hand side it is incredibly easy to press because they are only comfortable on one side and makes them extremely predictable and means that any opportunity to move the ball forward on that side of the pitch is now meaningless next thing we think we're man city we keep on playing a massive higher line with all our midfield pressing high at the pitch meaning if there is one pass we are cut wide open like a knife every time the amount of times against man city or aston villa or spurs that one simple ball can completely disregard our entire midfield and go straight to a 2v3 situation is countless and the worst part is we are the creators of our own downfall most of the time at times we actually control a good amount of the game the general control of the game of possession wise isn't really that bad because of our high line and the fact that players are playing out of position which is also completely mental it means that in this division it is way too easy to hurt us and 
to be put into basically a wide open situation time after time after time again. We aren't set up in a way that really protects our back line and the way that we push our midfield so high the pitch to press means that guess what? You are now in a 3v3 or 2v3 situation 15 times in a game. Al Dakio this year has played as a right centre back that also drifted to midfield and then a right back when the fact he is actually a centre back the entire time is also interesting. Cullen who the entirety of last season was the starter of every single attack and dropped deep at all costs is now not doing that anymore at all and is now one of the main pressers high up the pitch. He did one role very well, hence why he got the player of the year last season by fans and the players. And this year, he's just not done that at all. One final thing about the tactics. Attacking-wise, I kind of feel like we are kind of randomly setting things up, but nothing really has an actual plan. And I know that it's still early on, so of course, they still have time to gel. But right now, it feels like things just kind of happen when it comes to attacking and not really planned out or really set up to be that way and that's just kind of how I feel so far in terms of our attack we scored three goals you know which is we're scoring some goals I guess you know like if we didn't concede five then we would have won 2-0 you know so you know think about that everything felt structured last year and this year so far it just doesn't so because of what we've been used to it feels like a big disconnect so i hope that with time we can really sort that out and let's get into our transfers it's been quite a few and probably a lot more money than people would actually expect in this window burnley bought a lot of players of course some players did leave on loan and didn't come back like the likes of howard bellis martson and nathan teller so they did have to be replaced and they all did other than martson spending around 100 million pound in one window is mental of course however that does include the loan of of Mike Trezor that would be an obligation in the summer so really that's like 120 million quid which for Burnley is mental is big money and with that comes some expectation. Zeki Amduni I do believe is a fantastic player I do have a lot of faith in this lad so I have no real concerns of him making it all work in the summer. James Trafford of course quite a lot of money for a player that's never played a single minute of Premier League football but a England under 21 player who of course had a great season last year and you can see why he's one for the future. His inclusion into the squad instantly ahead of Muich is a bit of a question mark considering the fact that on the ball he's probably not as good as Muich and that is a big part of how we play. So ideally I do think as of right now I wouldn't be too against having Muich back in the team. Not because I think Trafford is bad but more because I don't think Muich has done much to really have that place taken away from him immediately. Aaron Ramsey and Sander Burke as to the midfield of Aaron Ramsey of course being high potential from Aston Villa but I think he's another one that is still young and will have to grow into the season. Santa Berger has got a bit more experience he's a bit more older so you expect him to make an impact almost you know, near immediately and I still think that his part in his role in the team still needs to be really found out as I do think he's more better attacking wise than he is defensively. Jordan Bayer was officially bought from Mushin Gladbach after a great year last year on loan and of course there's no complaints about him he's a great player. Although but from Troyes, young talent, quite a lot of money for a young player, but I do believe he's got a lot of ability. Same thing goes for the likes of Luca Cagliosho, who, again, has shown a lot of quality, especially for such a young age. And I think, again, it's one for the future, but one that, again, may not be ready for the here and now to make an instant impact in the Premier League. Dara O'Shea, Abafemi, Delcroix, with on a free transfer, Redmond and on loan and Brun Larson and Trezor and Vesengo as well on a free transfer too. So a lot of players to put into a team and I think we are trying to change the way that we played last year to suit these new players. Issue is you are in the Premier League and those games have got a lot of importance and therefore you are punished a lot more when you make mistakes. If we did that in the championship, we probably wouldn't be punished because they probably don't have the quality to make it count. But when you put against Aston Villa, Tottenham Hotspur with players that are 40, 50, 60 plus million in human son, James Madison, DRB, Ollie Watkins, and of course, don't forget Haaland. It makes sense of why we've had a start that we had with a team that is still relatively quite young and some with quite a lack of experience at this level. You count who's actually played in the Premier League and that squad who started 
you can count on the four in Gumerson, O'Shea, Roberts, and Berger. I think Colomir had like a couple of like minutes in for West Ham, but that doesn't really count. So how do we solve this situation? Because right now Burnley is concerning some people and some Burnley fans, and it's slightly concerning me, but I have faith that Vincent Company will make the changes needed to really make something happen fast. The first thing I would do for Burnley is simply add in a bit of experience and really go back to basics of what I think made the team work in the first place. Play with a team that was somewhat similar to what we had in the championship, which doesn't mean that it's a bad team, but basically put in players that know the system really well, knows each other very well, and how they play. So for example, play the likes of Josh Brownhill. He was played a year in the championship and he's not played many minutes so far. Put him back in the team and add a midfield three. Add a bit more solidity in that area as I think that is completely vital at this current moment. Same thing can go to the likes of Muric, who played with us for the entirety of last year, knows the system, knows the team and where they are on the pitch, and put him back in goal, who's of course much more comfortable on the ball. I think that makes a lot more sense. And if we want to play out from the back, I say let's use players that knows that position, i.e. play a right back at right back and left back at left back. So let's put Roberts back at right back, and I would say try Taylor as a left back as he is a left back, and instead not play centre backs and right backs a left back instead, because I think that would make a bit more sense at this current time period that we are a little bit stressed and what exactly is going on. What made us work in a championship is having players that could take a man on and make something happen. Cody Osho has definitely got that 1v1 ability, but maybe not the final product to put the ball in the box at times. So I don't think he's really a bad player right now, but I do think he can offer a bit off the bench. Goodmanson, of course, is a tidy player, but I think he's probably better in more central areas just because he's got the lack of um, pace to really take on a man. Lyle Foster and Amduni are both good players, and I think that both of them so far far are struggling to really work together as I think they are both doing very similar jobs in the system. Neither are particularly fantastic at dropping deep and linking up play like how he played last year and that's a bit of a concern because we aren't able to do what we could do with the likes of a Ashley Barnes or you know Jay Rodriguez that's on the bench. With Mike Trezor that signed that got 24 assists in Pro League last year and is a great player I hope that maybe he could be that creative spot that we need that can help us up the pitch retain the ball and keep a bit more possession because I think he could be a vital piece to how we want to play this year. Zaruri unfortunately did have a suspension but I think he also has a big part to play too as he is fantastic at 1v1s and can get the ball in the box and create opportunities so I think he has a part to play as well. So when he comes back I think that's dangerous. Manuel Benton of course is also very dangerous but I think he is very much a player that can make a massive difference off the bench. Burnley have played three games against three teams that ideally will be in the top six by the end of the year. When you think of it like that, it's not the end of the world. However, because it's been the first three games and then being at home makes it a bit more of a concern. But you know what? I guess it is what it is. But that's the hand that we've been dealt with and this makes the game against Nottingham Forest so much more vital as it's realistically our first game that we can say, you know what? We can go at these and potentially in terms of quality, we can play out from the back and play in this brave style of play as Forest may not have the star quality unlike the likes of City, Spurs, to make it pay. And we did see that in the cup. However, that wasn't the strongest 11s. Tell me down below your thoughts on Burnley. Are you concerned about us? It is still early days. However, when you concede 11 goals in three games, people will start asking questions. It's a question of, is Vincent Company being naive and doing potentially a Norwich, as what people said could be a possibility, that we try to play a similar attacking style of play and try to pass teams of the park like Norwich under Daniel Farker and it's simply just not working and it has to work soon as as we saw in Norwich if you keep on losing games then belief in your own ability will start fading and once that happens it is a very hard hill to climb back up on so we got 16 days now as a Burnley fan we got 16 days until that Monday night game against Forest that could potentially shape the course of our season. I would happily take a point right now just so that it means we don't lose. It's going to be a long season. It's going to be a fun one, of course. We, we, we can win one game and we're back up to 15-14, so it's not like we're going to die. And also, we have played one game less than most of the league. So, you know, it's not absolutely panic stations already. However, the way that we've played so far does make me a bit concerned in terms of how we actually want to go out because right now there's not a complete plan that I'm seeing. So time can only tell. So tell me your thoughts down below. I hope you guys did enjoy and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Peace out.